Okay, hello everyone. This is your learning coach Vinod, and so happy to invite you to the first astronomy masterclass of uh, 2021. Okay, uh, I'm first of all I'm so thankful for all of you guys. So far, we have had about 140 people online, and uh, this is one of the biggest events that we have done. We had more than 850 registrations. Okay, uh, and people joining us from uh, all over the globe. Okay, uh, we have people joining in from uh, London. We have people joining in from uh, US. We have people joining in from Japan, uh, Hong Kong. Okay, so 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 happy and a big welcome to all of you guys. Okay, uh, we are going to be starting the event in a while, uh, but before that, we have a small piece of announcement uh, for all of you guys who are uh, who have taken your time out on uh, uh, you know a sunday to be here with us to learn okay so uh, firstly i would want to invite uh, three students uh, from our uh, space science learning club okay uh, who have been part of our year-long program so they have been working on not just three but the entire group of students have been working on uh, uh, india's first student run uh, space magazine okay so we are planning to launch the magazine uh, in the coming weeks so we have uh, three student representatives of the whole bunch who are here to introduce the magazine with you so while more people you know join uh, for the event so without further ado i'm going to invite uh, vaishnavi hi vaishnavi and then uh, Sreshd. Hey, sir. And then I'm going to invite Uncle. OK. Hello, everyone. Keep up, guys. Yeah, over to you so you guys can take it over from here. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, all. Do you want your child to learn space science in a fun and an interesting way? Then you are the right place. I am Vaishni Randavate, grade 5 from Mumbai, and a student of Space Science Learning Club. We, children of this club, offer you and your child a fantastic chance to get a space magazine, by which you and your child can get to know everything about space and our universe. We normally know stars, comets, and meteor showers, but do you know Sirius, Betelgeuse, Alpha Centauri, or do you know the Halley's Comet, Chiron Comet, or the comet that crashed into Jupiter? Do you know the showers like the Earth sized meteor shower or the Perth sized meteor shower? Or do you know the Gemini's meteor shower? Most probably, the answer is no, right? So this is the right place to gain all your knowledge about space science, rockets, stars, galaxies, black holes, etc. In short, the whole knowledge of astronomy. Hello, friends. My name is Shreshth and I study in class 5th H, and I am uh, proud to be a part of SSLC. And now I am going to tell you that how are we creating our magazine? So we are asking everybody in our SSLC team to provide us with space articles and we, the content team guys, proofread it. Then you send it to the designing team where they put the articles in the layout which is being designed by the Canva website. And after that, the marketing team will reach to you guys to sell the article. It will be in the PDF form and the name of the article would be Astropedia. Hello everyone, I'm Sangal Chakravarti of class 5 Chennai and a part of SSLC. Today I'm going to tell you about the magazine which is going to be launched on 26th Jan 2021. We have got many advertisements which will help you and make your studies better. And if you want to give any magazines, please contact 9360-841-234. Please be sure to buy the subscription of our magazine. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. So what we wanted to do, uh, thank you so much for Vaishnavi, Sreyesh, and Sankalp. You guys have been a great host in introducing the magazine to all our uh, you know, viewers. Uh, what they have done is that they have created a 56-page magazine so completely written by by kids so none of these articles are kind of like you know sourced from the internet and, and put up as a magazine so they have you know uh, studied about a, a specific event and created an article completely all by the 
themselves uh, not just articles but also a lot of fun elements there are crosswords uh, uh, there are uh, uh, you know quizzes and a lot of other things you know which are added uh, into the magazine uh, uh, right from uh, the name of the magazine to the designing layout all of it is kind of like uh, uh, done by a student so so really proud uh, to have all of you guys here and uh, looking forward to launch this magazine uh, this magazine is going to be free of cost okay this is a student run magazine this magazine is going to be free of cost and uh, those of you who would want to get a copy of this magazine uh, will probably send a link uh, a similar google uh, you know form uh, for you to register for the magazine and once the magazine is launched on uh, jan 26th or you know in the subsequent weeks uh, we are going to you know send a copy free copy of it to you okay so looking forward to for you guys to you know register and uh, support uh, these children on their uh, endeavor okay so thank you so much guys uh, see you all uh, uh, vaishnavi shreshth and sankalp yeah okay Super guys, that was you know a small part of uh, of you know what we wanted to do. Uh, without further ado, I know a lot of you guys have been waiting forward uh, for the event to start. Okay, uh, for the astronomy 2020 masterclass to start, uh, we will we will you know quickly get onto it. So uh, I have a few questions. Whether it's a print or a digital version, it's going to be a digital version because it's going to be uh, costly to print. We want to give it for free, so it's a digital version. And what what we want to achieve is that the end to end process of this digital version is done by kids so most of them studying fifth standard sixth standard seventh standard okay so fantastic very good okay please repeat the number i don't know why that was my number so don't worry about the number you, all of you guys have uh, our uh, space science learning club number from where you would have got your uh, whatsapp to so you can just reply to that number and we'll be more than happy to send you a copy of this magazine when it is launched okay so without further ado let me quickly take you into today's presentation <coughs> let me do a screen share of today's presentation Okay, just give me one more second, guys. Uh, getting the presentation up and running, setting up the presentation. Neetu, there is one copy, and if you want to, you know, uh, forward it to others, you are more than happy to do that. Okay. So, how many of you guys are excited to start the session? So, how many of you are excited? If you are excited, just type me, M E. If you are excited, please type M E. Nice. Superb guys, superb. I am I'm equally excited, you know, with you guys. Okay, I'm having a small trouble with my uh, connectivity. So just give me one more second. One more second, I'm, I'm getting, you know, the presentation up and down. Okay. nice slowly building up to 254 people watching it live that's good so for the first time instead of a powerpoint presentation we have been using a canva presentation so that's the reason why there is a slight delay in you know getting the presentation up and running so
Okay, our presentation is up and running. Uh, okay, here is today's agenda. Okay, it's up and running now. So here is today's agenda. So what we are going to do in the session, uh, first thing what we are going to do is that we are going to you know introduce the session, what we are going to learn, who you are, who me, who am I, so what Space Science Learning Club is, and, and, and get on with that. So probably another three, four minutes uh, we'll be done with that. And then we are going to get into Astronomy 2020. What are the favorite astronomical and space science moments which happened in 2020. So I know 2020 had not been, you know, a great year uh, in terms of space science because uh, almost all these space agencies like NASA, ISRO, uh, the China Space Network, okay, uh, the Japanese uh, Aerospace Network, uh, almost European Space Agency, all the space agencies had to work here with, you know, minimal capacity, had to, uh, you know, push down a lot of launches because they were not able to... Uh, uh, you know, do so mm -hmm. with uh, with with the pandemic uh, around. Okay, but even then, we had a few milestone uh, events which happened in in 2020. And what we are going to do is, you know, quickly take a refresher or uh, to learn what what all the events that happened in 2020. So with that, uh, after that session is done, we have an expert interview. Mm -hmm. So we actually had supposed to have like you know two expert interviews. Uh, unfortunately. Uh, uh, the other one uh, has, has still not yet you know committed uh, the time so let's hopefully wait to see if you know the uh, uh, the astronomer uh, would, would you know join with us so and the last but not least we are going to have a kahoot session okay so last but not least the kahoot session is going to happen at the last we have a 15 question kahoot play uh, i know a lot of you guys have not played kahoot before so when we get to that kahoot session i'll share the uh, pin uh, with you and also how to play kahoot okay so don't worry superb so the first and foremost thing that we are going to talk about is uh, a brief introduction about what Space Science Learning Club is before you begin. I know some of you guys have already taken a few programs with us, uh, but uh, a lot of you guys have not taken uh, programs with us, okay? So for, for those of you whom uh, are kind of like very new to Space Science Learning Club, uh, we are a STEAM-based club. STEAM is science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics-based club to teach space science and astronomy to kids, okay? So that's, that's our prime uh, reason for existence. So we do have a lot of programs on space science and astronomy and, and uh, um, um, all our programs are cost effective and, and very much affordable for people, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and we are uh, powered by steadfast learning pedagogy. So steadfast learning pedagogy is, is a concept uh, came, uh, you know, uh, introduced by myself. Okay, I'm um, learning coach Vinod and uh, through steadfast pedagogy, what we do is that instead of making uh, you guys consumers of knowledge, like, you know, I'm going to say information and you're going to listen to information. So that's not how learning sh really should be. Okay, so we make you become creators of knowledge. So what you do with the information that we share becomes more important. So assignments, uh, you know, talks, you know, making magazines, okay. All these things are, you know, part of our club. So this is called a steadfast learning pedagogy and all the programs in our club are uh, done using steadfast learning pedagogy, okay. Uh, third thing is that since the lockdown, we have had more than 6,000 kids who have been part of our program. So a big thank you for 2020, uh, for all of those 6,000 people who have been part of it and, uh, and a big salute to all of you guys who have taken that pain and time to be here with us in 2021 okay so so that's about us uh, I'm, I'm a little strictler for rules so I always tend to you know follow rules when we when we do you know presentations so rules uh, makes it easy for you easy for me to to you know move on uh, first and foremost rule for this uh, next 90 to 120 minutes of uh, time that we are going to spend together is that please use a headphone okay or a earphone uh, this i say every time because 
uh, you don't get distracted from whatever is happening outside of uh, you know the, the this environment so the next 90 minutes i want your undivided attention next 90 minutes you want my undivided attention okay so we do that by 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 zoning us out so that you can easily do by wearing a earphone or a headphone so second one this is an interactive program so uh, i want you to ask questions to me and i would and i would also be asking questions and i want you to answer in the chat box so this is number 2 the third Third point is that uh, please don't spam the comments. So if if you are if I am not getting an answer, don't you know uh, ask that same question uh, hundred times in the comments. So uh, mostly I try to look out for all the comments. Okay, uh, just in case if we are running short of time, might have to skip a few comments and, and move on. So please don't uh, don't spam the comment by too many things. So next thing is that please don't switch over to other videos since we are here in YouTube. It would give you hundreds of YouTube suggestions. So so please don't switch over to other video. Uh, and the Kahoot pin, I told you we are going to be playing a Kahoot. So the Kahoot pin will be shared with you during the Kahoot session. So first we are going to finish the learning session and then we are going to start with the Kahoot session. So when we do the Kahoot session, that's when I would be you know, sharing the uh, screen pin with you. Okay. Superb. Okay. I, I think, I think uh, uh, a lot of you guys have been asking questions. Okay, if you are using a laptop, well and good. Even then, please wear a headphone, okay? <coughs> nice. So, uh, if you see, it's not mandatory for you to wear a headphone or a earphone, okay? I'm saying if you wear a headphone, even if someone is watching TV at your house, you don't get distracted because you are going to listen to me or else you would hear one word of what I'm going to say and you would hear another word of what is happening in the TV and it will not stick with you for a long period of time. That's the reason why I say that. So, so okay, now let us come to the big part where you guys are going to introduce yourself to me, please. Please type down your name, type down your age, okay, uh, or your class, which class you are studying, uh, which school you are studying, and where you are joining in from, okay, your city or state or, or anything. Please introduce yourself. Parnika, if you have a speaker, fine. I'm just saying, don't get distracted, okay? Don't sit in a place where you're going to get distracted. That's it. Kavya. Suresh, okay, Suresh just joined us some time back. Danyantara from Chennai. Krishnanshu from UK. Dhruv, Muthukumaran, Aditya, Jishya, Arav, Abhinav, Shubh, Smriti. Someone from Ireland has joined. Kalp, Manonme, Aburvan, Ashia, Emmanuel, Anish, Shalini, Savik. 10 years from Jabalpur, Hai Shavik, Yarni, Aryan, Niranjan, Avantika, Aaron, Mukesh, Dhruv, Anjali. Wow. Superb, guys. I'm so happy seeing a lot of you guys, you know, joining in from different, different places. We have people from Srikar from Hyderabad. We have Pavitra from Tutukudi, Tamil Nadu. And then oh, Yasash yeah. from uh, Karnataka. Zach, Ashutosh, is here. Hari Prasad, wow, that's nice, that's nice. 287 people are here. Very good, very good. Superb, guys, superb. So keep pouring in your introduction. It's not just for me, but for also uh, others who are there. So this pandemic, uh, one, one thing that has happened is that we have not been able to interact with uh, unknown people. So getting to know strangers is, you know, a part of life, which uh, a lot of people would cherish. Okay. So, so today is a good time for you guys to, you know, get to know others. We have people from all around the globe uh, joining with you. You could interact with them. But my simple advice for people interacting with others is be courteous. So don't be rude and uh, try to make friends, not enemies. Okay. So with that, let's quickly get on to the session. So a lot of you guys introduce yourself. I know some of you know me, uh, but still uh, there are a few people who are who are you know first time uh, with uh, Space Science Learning Club. So I'm learning coach Vinod Kumar. Uh, for 13 years, I've been a STEM educator. So science, technology, engineering, mathematics. I started my education career as a robotics trainer. So owning a robotics company. 
uh, and uh, I'm also, you know, a six times uh, chief coach to Team India for the World Robot Olympiad. So proud to say that my teams were the only teams in India to have won uh, for Team India, okay, in the World Robot Olympiad. So uh, also a NASA certified uh, Mars student space imaging program coach. So uh, I do teach uh, children and uh, teachers on new age learning. Okay, uh, I'm an immersive education specialist, uh, also an educator and an entrepreneur. So I own a few businesses uh, and, and focus myself on, uh, on, on, on these businesses. I live in Tirchirapalli and uh, so happy to uh, welcome you all to this event. Okay, superb. Superb. So we are going to start with the... Uh, um, you know, events. So before we start with the event, I know I just showed you one of the uh, events that we're going to talk about. But let me know in the chat box, what were your favorite astronomical events that you can remember? Or was there any kind of an astronomical event that you remember uh, that you want to share with us that you had, you know, been part of in 2020? In 2020. So I told you this is going to be a, uh, an interactive session. So I want you to type. Eclipse, Chandrayaan 2 happened in 2019. The conjunction, the Perseids meteor shower, the great conjunction, which happened, you know, two weeks back. Solar eclipse, very good. The Geminides meteor shower, Neowise comet. Wow, that was a huge commotion. A lot of people talking about Neowise comet. Very good. Blue moon, the great conjunction. Solar eclipse, okay. Any new things? ISRO launch of satellite. Okay, ISRO did a couple of launches last year. Multiple space launches. Uh -huh. So uh, rather than space agencies, a lot of private agencies did a lot of, you know, uh, uh, launches. So th those were kind of like very good. Perseids meteor shower, full moon, blood moon, solar and, you know, conjunction. Very good. PSLV C50. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the uh, mm -hmm. uh, milestones for ISRO. Uh-huh. NASA SpaceX joint launch. Superb, superb guys. Superb. A lot of you guys have already uh, known about a few of the events. So what we are going to do next is I'm going to put, you know, all these events in perspective and discuss with you in detail uh, what these events mean. So so what what is a blue moon actually? What is a lunar eclipse? So so let's let's try to discuss each and every event in detail. Okay. Superb, are you ready? If you are ready, type yes. That's nice. If you are ready, type yes. What is conjunction? We are gonna we are gonna see that a little while. Uh, awesome kids. Yes, yes, yes. That's nice. Fantastic, fantastic. Superb. Lot of yeses. That's good. Okay. So the first event that we are going to see uh, uh, in our in our astronomy 2020 masterclass had been the penumbral lunar eclipse. Okay. So uh, this was the first event which happened in uh, in 2020. So uh, what is an eclipse? Before we get into it, what is an eclipse? Let me know in the chat box what is an eclipse. <coughs> Shub, we can we will talk about conjunction when we get to that topic. Okay, what is an eclipse? What is an eclipse? Solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, there are solar eclipse, lunar eclipse, celestial bodies in a straight line. Celestial bodies in straight line is a conjunction, okay? So it's not uh, an eclipse. When moon casts its shadow on Earth, okay? So it's an astronomical event when a one celestial body, okay, it casts a shadow on another celestial body, okay? So this is what is called as an eclipse. So it's it's nothing, you know, out of the moon. Uh, 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 on an average, uh, 
uh, you can you can find somewhere about 20 eclipses happening uh, during a year so more than 20 eclipses there'll be a few lunar eclipses and there'll be a few solar eclipses so because earth and uh, moon you know they come across each other every now and then so so most of the times of these 20 you could find a few of them as you know a full eclipse so uh, some of them would be a partial eclipse so a partial eclipse is called as a penumbral so a lunar eclipse so uh, it, it occurs when you know the moon passes through earth's partial shadow so or penumbra you can see in the photo uh, there's a small shadow on the moon so this is called as the uh, penumbral lunar eclipse okay so uh, during this type moon will become dark okay but it will not be completely obscured or completely dark so this is called as the penumbral lunar eclipse so this happened on jan 10th and on june 5th okay so on both these two days the penumbral lunar eclipse happened let's get to the next event on uh, jan 30 okay so jan 30 the spritzer space telescope okay uh, which was part of the uh, uh, range of you know telescopes which are put in space uh, to study about our universe it was decommissioned so on Jan 30, so the Spritzer Space Telescope had been active for about uh, more than about uh, 30, 35 years. So this space telescope was decommissioned uh, on uh, Jan 30. So what the Spritzer Space Telescope did was that, uh, uh, okay, I have some questions. Okay, Devika, if the video is not clear, I would suggest you to just check if your okay. YouTube is uh, running on good bandwidth. So just click on the three dots and check if uh, uh, the video quality is set to 360 or 480 pixels. Okay, if it's going to be 144, it, it would be a little blurry. So what the Splitzer Space Telescope did was that, uh, as you guys know, astronomy is also the study of light. So uh, um, uh, what we what astronomers and space scientists do is that they sit on Earth and study about the light emitted by different uh, celestial objects. So they study about the light emitted by planets. They study about the light emitted by uh, uh, stars, exoplanets. Okay, and and try to deduce uh, meaning out of out of you know the study. So what the Spitzer Space Telescope did was that uh, it collected data using uh, spectroscopy so spectroscopy is the study of light okay what you do is that you you send light through a spectrum and you get different uh, lights of you know different wavelength you have uh, 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 infrared to ultraviolet to visible light there are there are seven or eight different wavelengths of light uh, available gamma rays alpha rays okay and uh, the the Spitzer space telescope was helpful in uh, getting uh, these uh, uh, data of different wavelengths of light emitted by the celestial bodies and uh, uh, they were you know deducing uh, more information about our universe okay so spectroscopy using spectroscopy scientists were able to study the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum so the uh, see uh, if we are only going to study the visible light okay so it would be very difficult to get more information out of it okay because all all the visible light would be same and uh, the light is traveling kind of like you know far 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 away uh, to reach to earth okay but if we try study the different wavelengths uh, studying in different wavelengths will give different understanding to the same data so uh, even the the, uh, the 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 presence of big bang okay so was was found by uh, uh, studying the cosmic uh, wave uh, background okay so using infrared so so a lot of data had been uh, collected because of you know Spitzer Space Telescope. Uh, it has been one of the go-to telescopes uh, other than the Hubble uh, for uh, scientists to know more about what's out there in the universe. So uh, this was decommissioned on Jan 30. Uh, the Spitzer Space Telescope is still up there uh, in space but what scientists hope is that uh, uh, preferably it would it would you know disintegrate into debris so it will just break out and uh, form space debris and fall onto Earth's surface uh, eminently. Okay, so this is a very very uh, important uh, event. Okay, why was it de decommissioned? Because it was too long. Okay, uh, it had it had been operational for you know a very long period of time, and we are uh, rather than Spritzer, we have you know more advanced uh, telescopes which are being sent to space now. Okay, Hubble is there. Hubble is one option. 
So in February 2020, okay, uh, European Space Agency, uh, which had been the forefront in uh, studying about the sun, uh, launched the Solar Orbiter uh, mission into space. Okay, so this was launched in February 2020. Uh, the Solar Orbiter mission is designed to study the sun up close to understand the bubble that wraps around the solar system. So if you are going to look at our solar system, the influence of the sun reaches to the uh, outer edge of our solar system. Okay, So this area where the influence of the sun reaches to is called as the heliosphere. Okay, it's called as heliosphere. Okay, so helio uh, is the name of our sun. Sphere is is the place where the sun holds absolute control over everything that happens inside it. So what uh, 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 the solar orbiter mission does is that it studies the heliosphere of the sun to understand what changes in the sun that happens will be seen in the heliosphere of the sun. Okay, so you have the sun and then you have the large area which is kind of like you know controlled by the sun. If there is any change in the sun, will it affect the heliosphere? So this is what the solar orbiter mission had been, you know, researching all about. So the most innovative thing about the solar orbiter mission was that, you know, it had a heat shield which can withstand temperatures up to 970 degrees Celsius. Okay, so uh, so so even if it goes somewhere close to the sun, it can still uh, exist. Okay, some people say that uh, my voice is not clear. Uh, guys, can you check if my voice is clear? Let me ask my team to check if my voice is clear. Okay, my voice is crystal clear. I think if there is any issue with your uh, uh, with the voice or with the video, I kindly request you to log off and uh, log in. So just refresh YouTube. Yeah, it should it should start working fine. Good. This is this is second one. Uh, let me take a couple of questions uh, and then and then go about. It's a sun observing satellite. Yes, that's right, uh, Siva Shankari. <coughs> okay, uh, aliens exist in their own galaxy. They are not in Milky Way galaxy. Okay, so it's not for sure. We do not know whether aliens exist or not. So we will get to aliens when there is a small section about it. Okay, super. Parker Solar Probe. Is another solar okay so the solar orbiter mission is specifically used to uh, you know measure the heliosphere so parker solar probe is used to measure uh, uh, the sun is sent to the sun okay fantastic so then we come to a very important event called as the super moon the moment that we say super moon uh, we are kind of like you know very excited hey what is this so something you know great that is happening so a super moon is an event when the moon is actually a little closer to earth than it usually would be okay so moon wobbles around earth just like how earth wobbles around the sun so during that wobble uh, you can find the moon, you know, come closer to Earth and go farther away from Earth, okay? So, in its orbit. So, this, uh, when it comes to closer to Earth, it's called as the super moon, okay? Uh, the super moon, uh, when the super moon happens, you know, it would be on the opposite side of Earth and it will be completely lit by the sun. So, it would happen only on a full moon. Okay, so when, when the moon is on the opposite side of Earth and it's completely lit by the sun, it means that it is a full moon. So, so that's when, you know, super moon uh, happens. And uh, 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 on Feb 9th, uh, March 9th, April 8th and May 7th, uh, four consecutive months, okay, we had uh, a super moon happening on the four full moons that took place, okay. So during a super moon, uh, uh, since I told you, uh, uh, th there is, you know, a closer point of, you know, wobble and uh, a longest point of wobble. So uh, since the moon is in the closest point of wobble, very close to Earth, so you can find the moon a little bigger. It will probably be one or two percentage bigger than what you see in the normal day, okay. So uh, if you are, if you are spotting the moon for the first time on a super moon you would not know a very big difference in the size but if you had been accustomed to you know watching moon uh, uh, every day so you will find that you know the super moon uh, not much big difference of, of you know the size would happen with the super moon so even in 2021 also we have you know super moons happening so we'll see, we'll see that later okay moon at perilion very good priya so moon at perilion 
how many moons are there totally in our solar system flora uh, somewhere close to 200 moons we are still discovering we are still discovering it's not like you know we know everything about our solar system so we are still discovering you know moons in outer planets so uh, so far about 200 different moons have been discovered okay so the next uh, you know great uh, event that happened was the great elongation of mercury and venus so any guess what is elongation what is elongation elongation what do you understand by this picture you can take a look at this picture and it can give you some idea about what an elongation is all about elongation no idea what is it same path going farther from sun exactly going farthest from sun a planet is the angular separation between the sun and the planet very good adi okay so that's right so uh, as you know along see there are different terminologies in uh, in planetary science so elongation is a term that you use uh, when you see an object from earth which is closer to the sun so the objects which are closer to the sun from earth are probably uh, venus and uh, mercury so when you see venus and mercury close to the sun and far away from the sun you call them as elongation Okay, so you have the western elongation and the eastern elongation. So during the western elongation, you see the planets in the east. During the eastern elongation, you see the planets from the west. So for instance, during the great elongation of Mercury and Venus, what happens is that Mercury and Venus are kind of like close to uh, sun. So you don't get to see uh, Mercury very often in the night sky because it's kind of like very close to the sun. So the moment that sun sets, probably for another five minutes, you'll be able to see uh, Mercury. So, or else it will also set along with the sun. During the elongation, what happens is that there is greater distance between the sun and Mercury. So, uh, during, after the sunset, probably uh, for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, you'll be able to see Mercury. So, it will be high above the horizon. So, from the horizon, you can find Mercury probably about 20, 30, 20 25 degrees, you know, high above the sky. Okay. So, that's the reason why it's called as an elongation okay uh, and as i told you we can see elongation of only two planets so the first planet would be mercury and the next planet would be venus because those are closest to sun and we are away from the sun so we, we won't be able to see you know the elongation of you know mars or jupiter or saturn because you know they are not closer and we are closer to them only if people from uh, if, if you know aliens existed in uh, jupiter they'll be able to see the elongation of earth and mars along with mercury and jupiter uh, venus okay so so this is this is what elongation is all about so uh, during elongation is when uh, is the best time to see um, mars and uh, venus okay so uh, during normal times it will be kind of like very difficult to see mars and venus so this year the elongation of uh, mercury and venus happened around uh, feb 10th on march 24th we had the elongation of mercury and venus together october 1st we only had the elongation of mercury and november 10th we had the elongation of mercury and venus okay so so this is it nine planet the planet nine theory or real see uh, even today morning i read in a news that uh, scientists have discovered a large object uh, which can be called as you know the uh, 10th planet okay we, we are right now you guys are asking whether nine is right or wrong but we we have you know evidences finding about 10th planet so so with regards to science it takes a lot of time see you can you can uh, you can create a hypothesis very very uh, easily you could say our solar system has got 50 different planets this may or may not be true okay to find evidences of this hypothesis, it will take time. It, it's not. It's not something like, hey, uh, what what you are going to search in your house. 
okay because the universe is very very big it takes time to find evidences for each and everything so to find out if the 10th planet or the 9th planet that they have discovered is actually a planet they need to apply the planetary laws of planetary physics to the planet to see if it has an orbit to see what is the shape of that planet to see if that planet can you know move away debris on its on its you know uh, orbit uh, to see if the planet really is orbiting uh, uh, you know uh, sun so lastly they said uh, uh, comets are objects which which orbit the sun okay but then there have been a few comets which had been orbiting uh, jupiter also okay but we still call them comets so there are a lot of ifs and buts which have to be taken into consideration to uh, to make proper announcements on on these kinds of scientific parameters okay good so let's let's get on to the next point okay it's the meteor shower okay so last year had been you know the uh, the uh, the year for meteor showers so many beautiful meteor showers uh, happened uh, all across uh, india uh, we uh, usually there will be about uh, 12 to 18 different meteor showers and some of them uh, you could you could classify some of them as you know uh, above average uh, some of them as you know average and some of them are low count meteor showers so meteor shower happens when uh, uh, uh leftover debris of comets okay so when earth enters uh, the 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 leftover debris of you know comet okay which is which is there in its orbit so those leftover debris you know fall onto earth's surface to create a meteor shark so it will look like you know in in one particular constellation or in one particular radian uh, these uh, these um, uh, uh, meteor showers would would you know enter into earth's atmosphere and they create large streaks of light okay it's a fantastic phenomenon to watch uh, breathtaking and and uh, uh, if you had seen a meteor shower you would you would fall in love with the skies more than ever okay how many of you guys have seen a meteor shower so uh, let me know in the chat box if you had seen a meteor shower type yes if you are not seen a meteor shower type no if you had seen a meteor shower type yes if you are not seen a meteor shower type no debris debris is leftover materials waste materials no 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 some of it yes okay lot of no's you have never seen and meteor showers can be seen with your naked eyes so meteor showers are called shooting stars so but technically they are not uh, made out of stars so it was earlier conceived that you know stars break down and fall onto earth so so that's why meteor showers happen so it's also called as shooting stars but meteor showers are not not that so meteor showers are due to leftover debris left by comets okay uh, which are also called as meteoroids uh, which are there in space so different meteor showers happen some of the uh, you know uh, favorites or you know the 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 large sector ones would probably be the perseids and the geminids so the perseids and geminids will have about uh, 80 to 150 meteors uh, per hour uh, this time the geminids was fantastic we are able to see about 100 to 120 uh, meteors during during the geminids meteor shower <coughs> So some of you might be wondering. I see. I see a lot of you guys have been asked, uh, saying no. Uh, hopefully in 2021 we would share a video with you when meteor showers would happen and where to look out for, and you will be able to find these meteor showers. Okay. So which is the most common meteor shower? So probably Gemini is a very common one. Uh, December is a very good time to look at space. Uh, right from November to March is a very very good time where the sky is clear in most parts of the world. Okay. So Gemini is a very good meteor shower. So many of you are wondering, hey, these are constellation names. So what are these constellations doing with name of the meteor shower? So what, uh, how these meteor showers are named is by the place where the radiant, the point where the debris enters into Earth. So uh, if the debris is entering into Earth in the Lyra constellation, it's called as the Lyra meteor shower. If it, you know, uh, enters into uh, Earth's uh, atmosphere through the ET Aquarius constellation, it would be called as the Aquarius constellation. Similarly, Perseus uh, constellation, it would be called Perseus. Ornids, uh, if it's from the Orion constellation, it would be Orins. So each of it is a different uh, 
uh, you know, uh, Comet. So for instance, ETA Aquarids is by uh, the Comet uh, uh, Haley. So a lot of you guys know about Haley's Comet, which comes uh, about 72 years once uh, into Earth's orbit. You can, you can see it. So ETA Aquarids, when every year during May, when Earth comes into the orbit of, you know, the, uh, the leftovers of uh, Comet Haley, so Aquarids meteor shower would happen. Yes, all these meteor showers are seen in, in from India. So what we are talking about are events that happened in India majorly. Okay, so we, we saw a lot of meteor showers. And next event, uh, which was kind of like very, very important uh, in 2020, had been uh, the, uh, the discovery of phosphine on Venus. Okay, so 30 years back, uh, uh, ever since, you know, human beings set foot on uh, moon, uh, the next thing that they wanted to research about was Venus. Okay, so why they wanted to research about Venus was uh, uh, to find uh, because it's Earth's twin. Uh, to find if if uh, literally we are to go someplace else other than the Moon. Moon has no atmosphere. Can we go to Venus because it's it's somewhat nearer to us? Okay, so uh, unfortunately, the moment that scientists send satellites to move to the Venus, they discovered that the atmosphere of Venus is kind of like very very thick that it does not let uh, greenhouse gases which are formed inside the surface of the planet out, making Venus the hottest planet in our solar system. Okay, so. Uh, ever since then, uh, scientists have been able to study only one thing to know whether uh, life can exist on a planet. So that's the atmosphere. If the atmosphere is good, then life can exist on a planet. If the atmosphere is not good, then life cannot exist on that planet. So in that in that way, uh, long time back, Venus was kind of like discarded as saying, hey, life cannot exist on Venus because, you know, the atmosphere is kind of like very, very thick and uh, and uh, there's no use studying about Venus. So, so, so it was kind of like discarded. But then in September 2020, a group of scientists uh, discovered phosphine gas in the atmosphere of Venus. Okay, so this phosphine gas uh has as you know uh, uh, this phosphine gas is found near microbes on earth so microorganisms so they release phosphine gas so the, the the scientific correlation is that if on earth microorganisms they they release phosphine gas if we if we can find phosphine gas next to microorganisms okay then if phosphine gas is present on venus there could be a possibility of microorganisms to be present on earth oh, sorry on venus so these microorganisms can be much evolved that they can even withstand the very strong, very hot uh, temperature of Venus. So this, this has been a very substantial uh, discovery. Okay, and scientists moving forward will will also uh, stress on finding more information about the atmosphere of a planet to deduce if life can exist on that planet more often. Okay. Next up. Ashutosh says 55 kilometers above uh, Venus's surface is kind of like habit habitable. That's where mm -hmm. they found the uh, phosphine gas. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. We cannot go to Venus. That's for sure. Superb. So next up, uh, what uh, this was one of the most talked about events uh, in 2020. So which was, you know, spotting Comet Neowise and Atlas. So Atlas uh uh was you know discovered last year okay uh, uh at about you know 72 million miles away from it but uh neowise uh was was kind of like uh, till the last moment they didn't think that neowise is going to be near uh it's going to be visible from earth okay but then neowise made a spectacular uh entry into our uh, skies and it was visible from most parts of the uh uh, Northern Hemisphere people enjoyed Neowise in all across uh, the globe. We we even organized, you know, a Comets Masterclass to see Neowise with your naked eyes and with a binocular. So it was a spectacular scene to watch. Okay, a spectacular scene. It was it was visible from all over India. Okay, so Sashin Sashin says, do you know that an exoplanet has hundred percent good atmosphere? Not true, Sashin. So there are lots of exoplanets which are uninhabitable. Un okay which uh, may or may not have an atmosphere so exoplanets are very 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 far away from us 
for us to study about their atmosphere just by looking at the light emitted by them so so it's kind of like difficult right now i think the scientific community has got technology uh, which would help them to deduce if it is an exoplanet or not not uh, you know the chemical composition the atmosphere and other stuff about uh, exoplanets okay super so uh, when we talk about comets there are uh, a different kinds of comets so you have you know a short orbit comet and a long orbit comet so uh, this uh, comet okay uh, uh, are from the kuiper belt or from the oot cloud of our uh, edge of our solar system okay so what happens is that when two comets uh, collide onto each other in the oot cloud or the uh, uh, kuiper belt uh, the resulting uh, debris the small and fragments which fall off from bigger collision okay so they get captured by the sun and they come inside of the solar system and uh, make an orbit around the sun so if the orbit of a comet is less than 200 years is called as a short term uh, uh, comet okay if the orbit is more than 200 years it's called as a long term orbit okay one second guys i have a guest who is willing to come online okay so so one of our guests is not uh, feeling well so he is not joining us he's actually in uh, uh, dr moi abbas a lot of you guys would know him so he is a, a phd in uh, astronomy and also an astronaut in training so i was looking forward to have him here uh, unfortunately he just messaged me that he is is unwell and not able to join us okay so no worries uh so short term uh, comets are comets which would take about 200 years time to you know move around the uh, for a, for an orbit around the sun and uh, uh, every now and then you can see them a bigger example of a short term comet would probably be comet uh, uh, heli okay heli's comet so which takes about 72 years and then uh, you have comet neowise uh, which is a long term comet so this one would take about 6800 years to come back to earth so none of us would be alive to see that so that it was a really really rare sight for us to see comet neowise in the night sky okay so what is the composition of a comet's nucleus so the comet uh, nucleus would consist mainly of ice okay and then uh, metal okay and then plasma so uh, uh, european space agency's rosetta Uh, uh what uh, rosetta did was that it landed on a comet to find out information about uh, more information about you know the comet so before rosetta they also had uh, one other mission which i'm not uh, able to remember the name so it went and it it you know struck on the comet to find out about what are the uh, information what are the you know elements which are there in its surface so they discovered that it was it was filled with you know ice number one number two with uh, dust okay number 3 with plasma plasma you can you can call it as you know metal uh, dust you know things like that so that is what you know is there in the nucleus of a comet superb so let's let's go to the next topic so this is comet uh, neowise on atlas uh, spectacular sight and if you did not get a chance to watch it my humble suggestion please go over to youtube after the class is over type down comet neowise and there are loads and loads of videos giving you instant access to how comet neowise uh, <coughs> i'm sorry looked in the night sky when it came down okay so um, the next big event that happened in uh, 2020 had been the annular solar eclipse so just like how we have different types of you know lunar eclipse you we also have solar eclipse happening uh, once every month so it's just that most times either uh, the moon is up or uh, you know below the uh, uh, you know earth so so that's the reason why you don't get to see the uh, annular uh, solar eclipse happen every month but uh, once or twice in a year uh, the moon earth and sun come in perfect conjunction to find about the uh, solar eclipse okay even in the solar eclipse there are different kinds of solar eclipse there is the total solar eclipse there is the partial solar eclipse and the annular solar eclipse so the difference between a total solar eclipse and an annular solar eclipse is for instance so let me just give you a small example i have this bottle cap with me uh, so uh, if i'm going to let's imagine that uh, the camera in my uh, laptop is the sun 
or is is earth okay and i am the sun uh, and this bottle cap over here is the moon so if i'm going to bring the bottle cap very very close to the sun what is going to happen is that you're going to see a total solar eclipse you're not going to see the sun so now you're not going to see me at all but if i'm going to bring the bottle cap to a place where just the outer edges of my uh, of my face or outer edges of the sun are visible is called as the annular solar eclipse it is it, it, it is when the moon appears at a particular distance from uh, the sun okay so this is called as the annular distance so it's it's too far away that it's not completely obscuring the sun but you can see the uh, uh, the ring of fire okay ring of light around the darkened moon so so this is called as a ring of fire so this is called as the annular uh, solar eclipse and during the annular solar eclipse you don't get to see the corona of the sun Okay, some of you guys want me to talk slow, would do that. So, so this is the annular solar eclipse which happened uh, on uh, June 21. Okay, uh, it happened during the, uh, in which month can we see commerce? So I'll teach you guys all that in a little while. Ring of fire happened all over India. So actually uh, the ring of fire uh, uh, passed through, uh, what is this place called? Uh, I think Barsa in uh, in uh, uh, north india okay in in rajasthan so it was it was a spectacular uh, thing to see so a lot of you guys have been asking about this was a recent phenomenon law everyone talking about a hey, uh, uh, jupiter and saturn jupiter and saturn a couple of uh, words so first we saw about elongation okay elongation happens for planets which are closer to earth so the next thing is the opposition so opposition means very simple it is exactly opposite to that of the sun so for people to see so let's say i am here okay and uh, 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 the camera is the sun and if an object is exactly opposite it's a, it's it's perpendicular to the sun okay what would happen is that i would be able to see the object in full view so so during the uh, opposition uh, you will be able to capture the planet see the planets in full view full brightness of the sun okay so this is called as the opposition most times you will only see some part of the planet because the other part would be dimly lit or you will have a, you know uh, uh, you know the shadow of the sun you know falling on the on the object you won't be able to see the full planet but during opposition you will be able to see the full planet so that's what is called as you know oppositions so uh, uh during opposition the planet would be probably more brighter than it it usually would be okay so the opposition of jupiter and saturn happened on july 14th and uh, july 20 okay teach slowly okay i'll try to you know teach slowly so the corona of the of the sun is the layer of the sun out, outer layer of the sun okay outer layer of the sun is the corona of the sun so i think we have come almost to the end of of the uh, uh, learning part we are going to go into the kahoot part so but before that uh, last year had been very special for a, a new reason so which was that uh, we instead of you know researching just about planets okay or our moon um, uh, the space agencies uh, started researching more about uh, asteroids, about comets, about, uh, you know, other space uh, items, which could be of use, which could be of, you know, uh, meaning to how our solar system started, okay, how our solar system was formed. So because these elements, so for, for instance, uh, if you're going to find, uh, if you're going to research on Earth, uh, to find you know how our solar system has formed uh, our earth has gone through a lot of changes metamorphosis over you know billions of years to become what it is today so you will not find many evidences okay but whereas if you are going to research an asteroid or a comet uh, which had been in the outer realms of our solar system we would not see those many changes happening in them so that's the reason why they do uh you know find reasons about why they do research about uh, other planets okay just give me a second Vicky. Vicky. 
Okay. Uh, okay, I'm not able to talk to him. Fantastic. So uh, a couple of uh, uh, noteworthy uh, missions would probably be the first one would be uh, asteroid Bennu. So NASA's Osiris uh, Rex mission. Okay, it went to a satellite. It went to an asteroid Bennu, which was situated a few uh, million kilometers away from us. I think about 300 million kilometers away from us. Uh, uh, dug some samples out of it and brought it back to uh, Earth. Okay, so it it has actually sent it back to Earth. So it has not returned to Earth as of now. Uh, then you had uh, the uh, Japanese space explorations Hayabusa two. Uh, which was launched long time ago which it reached you know asteroid raigu and uh, and it has actually returned the samples of asteroid raigu uh, which are with the japanese government right now so they, they study about what the asteroid raigu was all about what kind of things have been there in the asteroid and and, and stuff like that and uh, last but not least china last year uh, sent uh, the uh, change uh, changi 5 uh, mission to the moon to collect samples from the moon and came back uh, successfully Okay. Okay. Vaishnav says, I saw the Hayabusa 2 landing part. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. Okay. So the last, I think I'm at slide number 20 of 21. So this would be the last slide, uh, what I'm going to show. One of the most iconic events of uh, 2020. Uh, I don't know if you can call it as, you know, iconic, but it has been uh, a very, very sad moment of 2020. So the Arectibo uh, Observatory in uh, Mexico. Okay, so this was this was operational for about 57 uh, years, uh, and it was one of the largest radio dish telescopes in the world. Okay, uh, this was used to study about uh, 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 galaxies which are far, far away, and uh, this observatory uh, got uh, damaged because of cable malfunction. So they had cables strung on top of it. So cables. Uh, cut to each other and, and and you know fell down on the observatory destroying all that was there in the observatory so uh,
Okay, guys, I think I'm back. Uh, let me just, you know, refresh my Canva page and, and get you guys onto the presentation. So that's the great conjunction of uh, Saturn and Jupiter that we're going to see at last. Just give me a few seconds for it to load. Give me a few seconds for it to load. I'm so sorry. As as someone rightly said, my my network has gone into gone to lunch, and uh, was not able to connect you at all. Okay, almost my presentation is ready. Let me just open up my uh, stream. <coughs> Okay, so I think I'm almost back in here. Guys, do you want me to repeat about uh, the last slide that we are talking about? I don't know where we got stuck. So uh, let's see, Arcibo Observatory that we spoke about at last. And then let's, let's quickly see what the great conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn had been all about. So we saw, uh, I'm going to repeat this again uh, because these are these are some confusing terms. So first and foremost is that uh, uh, we saw about elongation. So elongation happens when uh, elongation happens when you see an object which is closer to the sun. So uh, so when we talk about Mercury and Venus, we talk about elongation. Okay. Opposition happens when the object is at perpendicular degree to the sun. So, so you can see the object in complete uh, way. Okay, so so that's when uh, uh, you know uh, uh, opposition happens. Okay, and the third terminology that we are going to learn for this uh, 2020, which has happened in 2020, is uh, the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. Okay, so this great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, it happened, uh, uh, a great conjunction happens when you are looking at it from one point of view and you can see two objects converge with each other. Two celestial objects converge with each other. Okay, So when that happens, you call it as a conjunction. So you have loads and loads of time conjunction happens. Uh, uh, so you see, uh, when, when Saturn, Jupiter, Earth are all in the straight line, you call it as a conjunction. So not just uh, Saturn and Jupiter. So conjunction happens also between uh, different planets. So you'll be able to see uh, Mars and Jupiter in conjunction. You'll be able to see Mars and Moon in conjunction. You'll be able to see Jupiter and Saturn in conjunction, Saturn and Uranus in conjunction. So different conjunctions happen. But on December 22nd, uh, uh, the great conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter happen because it doesn't come this close for another 400 years so that's the reason why it was called as the great conjunction so but but uh, nevertheless it was a fantastic sight to watch so jupiter and saturn had, is the second and third brightest object other than our moon uh, in the night sky so the first brightest object is venus the next brightest object is jupiter the third one is saturn Okay, fourth one is Mars. Okay, uh, so uh, so so it has been a daily habit for me to see Jupiter and Saturn. So whenever I go out, I look up in the skies and look out for Jupiter and Saturn. So having seen them, you know, 
wide apart and and over a period of time see both the planets come closer to each other like it's shown in the video so you can see in in the in the picture you can see the first picture uh, both the planets are wide apart and as days goes by they come closer to each other and on december 21st we were able to you know spot both jupiter and saturn very very close to each other so this was you know one of the one of the uh, marvels that you can see in the night sky so again this is not going to happen for another 400 years so so uh, i know a lot of you guys uh, went out and uh, watched this event so so it's kind of like you know very special even for us so with that i think uh, we have come to the end of the learning part so let me know which was the which was your favorite uh, event right now so we did share about uh, 12 different uh, events so let me know which was your favorite event right now in the chat let me know guys which was your favorite event in the in the chat great conjunction comet okay what else great conjunction the perseids meteor shower superb perseids meteor shower the super moon elongation meteor showers conjunction see the conjunction happens when two objects come closer to each other that's what is called as conjunction so they are in a straight line so they they you you seem like they come closer to each other but what happens is that they are in a straight line when they are in a straight line you don't see two objects you see only one object so that is called as a uh, conjunction so if one object is kind of like uh, 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 making uh, is kind of like completely obscuring the other object it's called as an occultation so there are different words different terminologies out there super moon super moon super moon super moon superb <coughs> sample collection sample collection was a, was a was a great feat okay just imagine we are we are talking about you know going to moon going to mars okay in space anything can happen what if an asteroid comes in contact with us so what can we make use of it let's know uh, it's it's widely said that you know uh, all the water in the earth was was brought down by uh, asteroid impact okay so what if we need water and we could you know easily get water from an asteroid which is li lying nearby okay when we are when we are traveling in space so so we got to know all these information so so it's a fantastic uh, thing funky labs arakibo observation collapse was my favorite it was a sad even buddy huh? not something to be favorite about the spitzer what what both the arakibo observatory and the uh, spitzer space telescope did was was phenomenal job phenomenal job and to decommission them to to see that you know they are, they could not be used anymore is a little bit of heart wrenching but why they do that is that because they want to put something else in place something better in place so looking at it it looks you know more positive super so with that we are going to go to the last section so which is going to be a kahoot game uh, we are going to be playing uh, a uh, 15 question kahoot so before i share with you the uh, uh, game pin of the kahoot i want to share with you guys something uh, uh, that we are launching for today uh, give me one packet of uh, space cards so we are launching uh, for for a long time we have been saying that we are launching the uh, 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 young astronauts guidebook to space science so and astronomy so the space cards uh, from today we are shipping the space cards so so happy to share with you all uh, this news uh, i'm going to share with you the space cards right now okay so another one another one so this is the space cards so you you are going to be getting you know the space cards in a, in a beautiful pouch like this so what the space cards holds is so this is the bound space cards pack so in the inside this bound pack you have 67 different space cards so each space card is a is a is a terminology used by astronauts used by space scientists okay and their meaning so for instance uh, this is called retrograde so today we did not check out about retrograde but retrograde is the motion of planets around the orbit of our sun so what kind of an orbit they take so you have complete explanation about what this word is all about 
for instance open clusters it's about you know the uh, the galaxies the stars in our galaxies how well they are packed how old they are how new they are uh, you have brown dwarf you have comet okay a lot of you guys were asking us about comet so what a comet is is written out over here so with clear explanation of what what this is all about so what we have done is that we have collated 66 different cards so all of it is 66 different cards and and this would be a fantastic addition for you guys uh, if you are interested in space science and astronomy and not just that not just you know giving you a card and saying hey you can just turn around and read around it so what we have done is that we have designed a fantastic interactive course uh, where I would be explaining to you guys what each and every card is, uh, where you can find more information about it. If there is any kind of you know interesting uh, 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 tidbits about 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 uh, that word, so I, I would you know share with you in uh, the uh, course. So listen, sometime back we spoke about occultation. So what occultation? So you can find the moon, and the moon is kind of like uh, going to obscure. It's going to come in front of Mars. Okay, this is called as occultation. So today we have learned about four new terminologies. We learned about uh, conjunction. We learned about uh, uh, opposition. We learned about occultation, and we learned about elongation. So all these words are kind of like you know covered out over here. Uh, it's it's a fantastic addition. It's for just two hundred and ninety nine rupees. Uh, as soon as this call is over. Uh, you can just check the uh, description in the in the in the video. So or the first comment, we will have the link for the cards. If you are interested, you can you know buy the cards. So without further ado, let me quickly take you to Kahoot. Kahoot. Okay. So. Okay, we are here at the Kahoot. So this is the Kahoot game pin. Uh, for those of you guys who are new to playing Kahoot, uh, to play Kahoot, you would need two devices. Okay, uh, if you are logging in from a laptop, you can probably open up two windows next to each other and play the Kahoot. If you are logging in from a mobile phone, you would require two mobile phones. In one mobile phone, I want you to watch the video. So the YouTube should be live on one mobile phone where you are going to see the questions. And in the other mobile phone, I want you to visit this website. Visit this website called kahoot.it. You can find this kahoot.it. So visit this web page. And once you visit this web page, enter the game pin 9378809. Visit this web page and enter this game pin 9378809. So once you enter this, it's going to ask for your name. Please enter your name. It's going to ask for a nickname. Please enter your name. Don't write any funny names. So enter your name and then click enter. It would say you are in. So just wait at that screen where it says you are in. Once I start the Kahoot, you will be able to see the questions in your YouTube page. And the answers would be visible as colors in the other, other device okay, or in the other screen. So you can just click on that colors. Uh, the right answer and you could join with us in the game so remember to win in this game you need to do two things first thing is that you need to answer the questions right and the second thing is that you need to answer uh, uh, you know it uh, fast We have 300 people, so I'm just going to wait for 200 people to join. IRE, you want me to repeat? Just give me one second. So to play the Kahoot, you need two devices or two screens. 
in one screen you're going to be watching the youtube videos and in the youtube video i'm going to be showing the questions so in the other device i wanted to visit this web page kahoot.it and enter the game pin 9378809 when you do that you it's going to ask for your name uh, enter the nickname and uh, get in so once you are in uh, what happens is that when I click on start, the questions would be visible to you in YouTube and you could see the options there in YouTube. You will have to select the correct appropriate answer in your uh, other device. In the other device, only answers would be visible. Only colors would be visible actually, not even answers. So for instance, um, I'm, I'm just asking for a question, uh, uh, what day is today? Okay, it's the first question. So there are four options to you, Friday. Uh, which would be in red color saturday which would be in green color uh, sunday which would be in yellow color and uh, monday which would be in blue color so you know the right answer is sunday yellow color in the other device you will only see these four colors so you will just click on yellow in the other device so you need to click as fast as possible and as correct as possible that's how you can win the kahoot okay So as soon as the Kahoot is over, we are going to have an expert interview. We have Mr. Prabhakaran, uh, a very serious astrophotographer, a very you know renowned astrophotographer in India. His photos have been used by a lot of astronomy magazines. Even uh, during the Chandrayaan uh, launch, his photos of you know the moon was was you know used by uh, uh, by ISRO and also by our Prime Minister. Okay, so he's going to share with us uh, what his favorite event in 2020 was all about. How did he enjoy those events? How many questions? 15 questions. Yarni, if you don't have another device, uh, you will have to, if you are if you're from a laptop, you can use, you can use a split screen feature. So you can just resize one window where uh, YouTube is there in another window. You can you can you know see the uh, uh, kahoot answers and, and and answer but if you are logging in from a mobile phone it would be difficult uh, because most devices don't uh, have split screen feature so if you <coughs> i'm sorry if you can you know have a split screen feature well and good if not you can probably uh, uh, use uh, uh, you know two devices Okay, 160 people. We have 270 people live. Uh, what is the topic? The topic is going to be whatever we have learned today. Astronaut Harish, yes, scientific Tamil and Prabhu sir is in. The meanwhile, uh, Priya, it say, Priya says it's showing you are in. Uh, see your nickname on screen. Your your it means that you are in. So just wait. When I click on start, you will start seeing the questions. Okay. Answers page will be shown next. When I click on start, answers page will come on. Okay. So we have one sixty five people. So let's wait for one seventy five people and then start. Okay. So those of you who are not able to join. I know some of you, this is the first time that you guys are playing Kahoot with me. So don't worry about it. You can answer in YouTube, but answer in the last 10 seconds. So just, just type in your answers. Wait for you know the last 10 seconds. When you see 10 in the screen, you can type down the, you can just press enter and the answer should be visible. Okay. 165. I'll wait for 165 people and start. Okay, good. Okay, we have gone to 168. Okay, guys. So the the game pin will be you know visible in the uh, bottom screen. Okay, so you can you can you can just you know log in from there. Guys, those of you who are asking how to play, please click on uh, check if you know your YouTube is running on live. 
so if your youtube is going to be running late it will be difficult i know some of you guys have already been playing uh, kahoot with me so it's kind of like easy for you and a few of you it's kind of like new uh, just try to participate and and be there it's uh, all, all that matters is to be here you don't have to you know uh, win the kahoot so being there is is all that matters so I, i'd be really happy if you can just be there Awesome. So one seventy six. So Harun, if it says you are in, it means that you are you are uh, you are in. Okay. So you don't have to worry about uh, whether your name is there on the screen or not. Okay. One seventy eight. One eighty. I would start. Just visit kahoot dot it and enter the game pin nine three seven eight eight zero nine. and you can join this game okay okay i think it's getting late late so i'm going to start the game right now so this is astronomy 2020 and you have 15 questions the first question to you is this how many supermoons happened in 2020 how many supermoons happened in 2020 there's going to be a delay between the time that you see the questions and the answers answer would come up first and the question probably has got a 15 to 20 seconds delay so don't worry about it if you are using mobile data you would you would probably have a 20 second delay if you are connected in wifi you are going to have let's say a 10 to 12 seconds delay so now i'm connected in wifi data and i am able to see a 9 second delay guys those who are answering in the youtube please answer in the last 10 seconds don't don't answer before that answer in the last 10 seconds very good very good out of you know 180 people we had four people sorry uh, 68 of you guys uh, choose it right so the right answer is four super moons happened in 2020 so you can see the leaderboard we have kavya followed by viplav joshua dhruv and sparsh so this is question number 1 of 15 next question spectroscopy is the study of stars ashutosh the game pin is 937 8809 9378809 so when we learned about spectroscopy we did discuss about the uh, uh, splitzer space telescope how it uses spectroscopy so the question here is spectroscopy is a study of stars is it true or false spectroscopy is a study of stars true or false guys those who are going to answer first what i'm going to do is that i'm going to uh, probably uh, cut you from chat please don't make me do that you type down your answer don't press on enter last 10 seconds you press on enter okay last 10 seconds you press on enter we have 180 answers and 111 of you guys got it right spectroscopy is a study of light spectrum okay so is the study of light it's not the study of stars the study of stars is astronomy okay good so any change in the leaderboard yes five new people into the leaderboard viplav has taken over the pole position and sparsh anu arav and ashmit are the new entrants into the leaderboard and up 26 places jisha Jisha is the highest climber. Very good job, Jisha. Guys, answer in the last five seconds, last ten seconds. Okay, don't answer fast. So, which gas? This question number three. Which gas was found in Venus that can support life forms? Is it phosphine? Is it hydrogen? Is it krypton? Or is it oxygen? 
which of these gases was found in venus that can support life form very good guys please type down your answers keep it ready in the last 10 seconds you can just press enter <coughs> Five, four, three, two, one. It only shows colors on both devices. Yeah, it's only going to show the color, uh, Shiza. So you got to see the questions in YouTube. You can see the answers in different colors in YouTube and corresponding color you pressed it down there. So phosphine is the right answer. Very good. 116 of you got it right. Okay. Viplav is holding on to the top of the leaderboard, followed by Anu, Ara, Vashmit, and Rishi is the new entrant in here. So up 42 places, Kavin. Good job, Kavin. So this is question number four of 15. How many types of comet orbit are there? We discuss about comets. We discussed about different types of orbit of a comet are there. How many times? So do they have millions of you know types of orbits? Are there two orbits? There are no orbits for comets, or are there five? types of comet orbits in there. <laughs> okay, last 15 seconds. We have 160 answers now at last 10 seconds. That's good. All the YouTubers who are watching it in YouTube, you can answer right now. Press your enter. Awesome. A lot of millions, but millions is not the right answer. There are only two types of comet orbits. So the first type is the short orbit comets. Okay, the next type is the long orbit comets. Okay. So Short orbit comet, an example is was Haley and uh, the long orbit comet, Neowise. Okay, Anu has taken over the first place, followed by Adit, Prathana, Darshan, and Kavita. Good job, all of you guys. And 10 players have three right answers in a row. That's nice. Question 5 or 15, which is a very easy true or false question. When an astronomical body casts its shadow, on another astronomical body. It's called elongation. Is it true or false? Guys, don't answer right now. Answer in the last 10 seconds. When an astronomical body casts its shadow on another astronomical body, it's called an elongation. Okay, last 10 seconds and I have mostly 170 answers now. When an astronomical body casts its shadow on another astronomical body, it's called elongation. And the right answer is false. So when an astronomical body casts its shadow on another astronomical body, it's called as an eclipse. Okay, an elongation is when the object is farthest from the sun so that it's easy for us to find it. Okay, good change. Adit takes over and Prathana has five right answers in a row. Good job, Prathana. Anu and Darshan are pulled down and Rishi is back into the leaderboard. Good job. Kahoot pin number is 9378809. That's the Kahoot pin number, 9378809. So name the asteroid from where NASA's OSIREX collected sample from. Name the asteroid from where NASA's OSIREX 
collected sample from? Is it from the asteroid Ceres, from the asteroid Bennu, from the asteroid Hermes, or from the asteroid Raigu? Hey, the screen is not clear. I'm just checking out uh, YouTube uh, in, in another device. So, see, I'm also checking out you know YouTube in another device. It's, it's working fine for me. So preferably, uh, just check if your uh, YouTube is running on good bandwidth. Just click on the three dots on top of the video, and and uh, and uh, see if you guys can click on the sorry, on the three dots on the top of the video. So it will open up. It will open up uh, the uh, quality. So just change the quality to such a way that it's, it's kind of like good enough for you to watch. Okay, asteroid Bennu is the right answer. Raigu was by Hayabusa. Bennu is the right answer. So any change in the leaderboard? Rohita and Arav are new entrants into the leaderboard. Good job. And Anu takes over the pole position from Madit and Prarthana. Question number seven of 15. It's a true or false question. Comet Neowise will not be seen next in the 6,800 years. I'm sorry, it should have been Comet Neowise will not be seen in the next 6,800 years. Is it true or false? Is Comet Neowise a long orbit comet or a short orbit comet? is the question guys answer in the last 10 seconds please Very good. So uh, it will not be seen in the next 6,800 years. That's the true. So it's a long orbit comet. Very good. Darshan and Aditi are into the leaderboard and it's a tough question. So three players just, you know, skip their answer streak of six right answers. Question number eight of 15. The solar orbiter mission studies about this region of the sun. Which region of the sun does the solar orbiter mission by the European Space Agency study? So is it the corona? Is it the heliosphere? Is it the solar rays or is it the photosphere? When we talk about corona, we are talking about, you know, the outer layer of the sun and not the coronavirus. Very good. It's the heliosphere. Okay. We did talk about the corona of the sun when we talked about the solar eclipse. So Prarthana has taken over the pole position. Darshan and Aditi is, is you know, uh, climbed up. And Sartak is back with three right answers. Good job, Sartak. Question number nine of 15. A true or false question. The sun's corona is visible during an annular solar eclipse. I just told you the answer few seconds ago so this is thousand points gifting to you guys the sun's corona <coughs> is visible during the annular solar eclipse <coughs> Last 20 seconds left.
Okay, we have 180 answers and the right answer is the corona will not be visible during the annular solar eclipse. So the moon is going to obscure the sun in an annular solar eclipse. So you will be able to see the ring of fire. The corona will not be visible. Okay, we have Aditi taking out the second place and Ashmit and Arav are back in to the leaderboard. So tough player, four players lost their answer streak of eight right answers. That's hard luck. That's hard luck. So question number 10 or 15. Which object comes in between sun and earth for an eclipse to happen? Just write, type down that object. If it's Venus, type down V-E-N-U-S. Don't write the Venus, okay? So just write whatever is that object. Don't write the A, I, you know, nothing of that sort. It's a, it's a question where you type down the answer. Please type down the answer. So send or flash feedback link in chat box. Uh, I don't know what, which feedback are you asking for, Abdul? Uh, if you are going to you know, say something about the session, you can probably say it over here in the chat box or leave a comment for me to answer. Which, come, which object comes in between the sun and earth for an eclipse to happen? <laughs> So here is Mohammed Afi saying Mars and Venus. So what would normally happen is that uh, for an eclipse to happen, the shadow of one object comes to fall in the other object. Okay. So if, if the shadow doesn't fall, then it's not an eclipse. It's a conjunction. I told you three or four objects in a straight line. Okay. So for a shadow to fall, I don't think Mars's shadow will ever fall on Earth because they are too, too far away. So the only object where an eclipse can happen would be the moon. And 133 of you guys got it right. Very good. Arav is back with an answer streak of three right answers. Good job, Arav. So there's little distance between Arav and Asmit, both on the same score. Question number 11 of 15. Sanjana, the game pin is 93788809. Meteor shards are leftover pieces of what? The brilliant bright streaks of light that we see during the meteor shards are leftover pieces of what? Comets, asteroids, stars, or planets? You, the options available to you are comets, asteroids, stars, or planets. Planets, stars. Ilavaragan, that's because you know there's a small network uh, delay in YouTube. So you, you will see the questions 20 seconds later, but you will see the answers fast. If you are seeing the answer questions even greater than 20 seconds, just check if your YouTube is running on live. Good. Meteor shards are leftover pieces of comets not planets, asteroids, or stars. Good. Big change. Arav and Asmith have moved to the second and third, third and fourth place, while Arnav is first time into the leaderboard. Good job. And Dhruv is back with an answer streak of three right answers. Okay. What do you call when Mercury and Venus is farthest from the sun? What do you call this event? When Mercury and Venus is farthest from the sun you call it as occultation you call it as eclipse you call it as opposition or you call it as elongation we did read about all these four events let's see for those of you guys who are getting it wrong you would definitely need these space cards
okay last three seconds three two and one we have 178 answers the right answer is elongation very good the right answer is elongation when mercury and venus are farthest from the sun that's when we are we will be able to see them high up above the horizon from earth okay so we'll have clear visibility so that's that event is called as elongation so archie and viplav are new entrants into the leaderboard and usharani is the highest climber up 20 places good job usharani so this is question number 13 of 15 which of these objects are visible to the naked eyes so listen to the objects and then choose the right answer exoplanets galaxies comet and asteroids which of these objects are visible to the naked eye <coughs> We are right now in 13th question. That's why you are seeing answers for the 13th in your mobile phone. OK, for e-certificate, I uh, uh, hope you are registered uh, earlier. So what we are going to do is that we are going to send the registration link the same way that we have sent you uh, the link to join. OK, so we are going to send it to your WhatsApp number, uh, the place where you can uh, uh, download your e-certificates. Okay? Last 10 seconds, we have 170 answers. Wow, all of you guys have answered. Very good. Comet is the right answer. That's good. And we are here with the leaderboard. There's a change. Archie, Viplav, and Aditi are back into the leaderboard on tough players. 12 players lost their answer streak of three right answers. Wow, Prathana and Arav are closely holding on to the top position. So Archie and Viplav, if you can get the last two answers, much faster than than you know RO, there's a chance for you to go to the second place question number 14 of 15 what do you call a planet when it's fully illuminated by the sun when seen from earth what do you call a planet when it's fully illuminated by the sun when seen from earth what do you call it what do you call when a planet is fully illuminated by the sun when seen from earth do you call it as occultation do you call it as eclipse do you call it as opposition or do you call it as elongation a lot of answers for eclipse i know all of you guys are uh, kind of like hey let me answer it wrong so that those of you who are choosing it in Kahoot will get it wrong. Huh? Eclipse is the most wrong answer for that question. <laughs> it's the most wrong answer. Maybe you can get it differentiated between occultation, opposition, and elongation. Okay, But eclipse is the most wrong answer. So the right answer is opposition. It's, it's opposite to that of the sun. Okay, That's why we could see the, uh, the object in full face of it very good so archie anu archie has you know overtaken okay anu is in the third position ara and adit are in fourth and fifth position and ram is up 23 places good job ram and great holding on to the first position prathana this is the last question the great conjunction in december happened between jupiter and venus The great conjunction between Jupiter and Venus uh, that happened in December happened between Jupiter and Venus. Okay, last 10 seconds. I think all of you guys have answered this question.
Okay, the right answer is it happened between Jupiter and Saturn. Very good. When I click on next, we are going to check who are the winners, top five people in the leaderboard. So let's quickly take a look at who are the top five people in the leaderboard. In the third position, we have Anu. In the second position, we have Archie. In the first position, from question number eight, I believe, is Prathana. Good job, Prathana. And in the runners up are Adit and Arav. So good job for all of you guys for participating in this Kahoot. So now we are going to go back and uh, listen to what uh, Mr. Prabhakaran, so uh, astronomer and also uh, a very, very good astro photographer uh, wants to share about his favorite event in uh, uh, 2020. Okay. So, so give me a sec. Hello everyone, I hope you are doing good. I'm Prabhu, I'm an astrophotographer, also I'm an astronomy enthusiast. So I've been doing astro astrophotography for quite a long time. I would like to thank Mr. Vinod for giving me this opportunity to share my experience among everyone. So uh, right now I'm in a parking lot, I hope you don't mind because I couldn't make it on time to my home. So I just parked my car in a parking lot, I'm doing this live from here. So um, I have been capturing a lot of celestial events over the years and last year in 2020 I was able to capture many celestial events and I was able to witness as well. Among all the celestial events my favorite one would be Perseids meteor shower because it happened on a moonless night and uh, the sky was pretty clear from where I watched and I was able to witness something around 500 meteors including some fireballs and I was able to capture 70 of bright meteors in my camera. And also I made a, a, a very good collage and it was featured in many magazines and uh, uh, some other forums as well. So um, you can check out my photographs if you would like, uh, including that media share picture uh, on my website prabhuastrophotography.com or you can see entire thing in my Instagram handle as well. You can just find Prabhu Eskuti because recently I've, I've not been updating all of my images in the in, in, in my website because it's taking a bit of time so you can check out my images on Instagram so uh, speaking of uh, celestial events in 2021 check okay I'm looking forward to uh, to witness the same Perseids meteor shower because unfortunately uh, from my location there aren't much eclipses visible so there are few lunar and solar eclipses but uh, uh, those are not visible from my location and also there aren't any uh, great Okay, uh, guys, I think there has been some uh, kind of, you know, technical difficulty again. Uh, let me play uh, Mr. Prabhu's uh, video uh, one more time. Okay, just give me one second and I'm going to play Mr. Prabhu's video one more time. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing good. I'm Prabhu. I'm an astrophotographer. Also, I'm an astronomy enthusiast. So I've been doing astro astrophotography for quite a long time. I would like to thank Mr. Vinod for giving me this opportunity to share my experience among everyone. So uh, right now I'm in a parking lot. I hope you don't mind because I couldn't make it on time to my home. So I just parked my car in a parking lot. I'm doing this live from here. So um, I have been capturing a lot of celestial events over the years. And last year in 2020, I was able to capture many celestial events and I was able to witness as well. Among all the celestial events, my favorite one would be Perseids meteor shower because it happened on a moonless night and uh, the sky was pretty clear from where I watched and I was able to witness something around 500 meteors including some fireballs and I was able to capture 70 of bright meteors in my camera and also I made a, a, a very good collage and it was featured in many magazines and uh, uh, some other forums as well. So um, you can check out my photographs if you would like, uh, 
including that media share picture uh, on my website prabhuastrophotography.com or you can see entire thing in my instagram handle as well you can just find prabhu eskuti because recently i have not been updating all of my images in the in, in in my website because it's taking a bit of time so you can check out my images in instagram so uh, speaking of uh, the celestial events in 2021 i'm looking forward to to witness the same perseids meteor shower because unfortunately uh, from my location there aren't much eclipses visible so there are few lunar and solar eclipses but uh, uh, those are not visible from my location and also there aren't any uh, great planetary conjunctions as well and also there are not any uh, transits so i'm looking forward to see perseids meteor shower and uh, geminids meteor shower but i think geminids will be a little bit hard because it's happening on a gibbous moon day so i don't think it will be great anyhow i'm looking forward to see perseids meteor shower as the moon that day is going to be a uh, somewhat crescent so it will be great to watch so thank you once again everyone have a good day okay guys uh, i'm so sorry that there has been you know some uh, technical difficulty and uh, uh, we have not been able to uh, you know have him online uh, he was stuck in an hospital and and he said he's going to quickly make a video which we we thought you know we are going to uh, showcase to you uh, those of you who are interested in astrophotography uh, who wanted to check out more of you know what uh, a lot of the events that we covered today in the session uh, he had you know shot uh, real time photographs of them so please do visit uh, prabhuastrophotography.com and and just check out for him in uh, instagram at uh, prabhu astrophotographer uh, you should be able to find him and uh, a great guy to follow in instagram and uh, check out his website okay so with that uh, i think we have come to the end of the uh, session uh, what we are going to do is that we are going to be sending you a, a whatsapp Uh, just like how we had sent uh, uh, the link for you to join okay uh, in that link you will have access to download your certificates and we'll also send you the link where you can purchase the space cards a lot of you guys have been asking for space cards uh, you can purchase the space cards from that link okay uh, with that i think we have come to the end of the session uh, are there going to be any prizes for kahoot no so this is not the kahoot with learning coach uh, session this is the astronomy master class so all of you guys being here is itself kind of like you know a big gift to you all uh, so so we are not going to have any uh, prizes for kahoot uh, looking forward to play more kahoot and more programs uh, with you guys okay uh, please do check out our website uh, www.learnspacescience.com it has got loads and loads of programs for you uh, we also have a year long program where uh, i'll be teaching uh, uh, you guys on how, what space science is what astronomy is on live classes every monday so if you guys are more interested about it uh, please uh, please you know uh, let us know through the uh, whatsapp chat and we'll be more than happy to assist you in any way possible so with that uh, uh, this is the first master class that we are finishing on time okay so 4 o'clock we are supposed to finish so at 4 o'clock i'm going to you know end the call uh, so happy uh, being with you all hope uh, you guys enjoyed so since this is the first master class we are doing it for free Uh, what we are doing is that uh, probably in a week's time we wanted to give this announcement but let me just keep you posted on to it uh, we are coming up with a with a, a club okay so where uh, uh, every month we are going to be providing you know value about astronomy and space science to those club members so uh, we are looking at somewhere close to uh, pricing the club at about 250 to 300 rupees per month okay where you get you know an astronomy master class where you get you know a kahoot session to play with me where you have various expert interviews to attend to um, a lot of different projects and activities in astronomy that you can do so it's going to be a large launch we are looking at you know launching the club on jan 26th or, or during that time okay so looking forward to all your support uh, to being you know part of the club thank you so much uh, see you all bye bye okay bye guys if you are still here please do uh, subscribe to the channel and please do share the video to anybody whom you think would be interested in astronomy and space science ha huh? see you all thank you so much prathna thank you guys thank you all for your feedback okay bye bye